Chapter 9, Aversion, Conversion, and Contraposition. Introduction. In Chapter 6, we said that there were two kinds of relationships among categorical propositions. Relationships of opposition and relationships of equivalence. In Chapter 6 and 7, we studied the ways in which propositions are opposed to one another. In this chapter, we will discuss the different ways in which propositions are equivalent. In logic, the way we say two statements are logically the same, even though they may use slightly different words, is by calling them logically equivalent. Equivalent propositions can be converted into each other in various ways. There are three ways to convert propositions into their logical equivalents. Aversion, conversion, contraposition. Aversion. To avert a sentence, you must do two things. One, change the quality of the sentence. Two, negate the predicate. To change the quality is easy. If the statement is affirmative, you simply make it negative. If the statement is negative, you simply make it affirmative. But be careful. Do not change the quantity of the statement. For example, if you say all S is P, you change it to no S is P. Do not change it to some S is not P. If you did the latter, you would be changing the quality, but you would also be changing the quantity, which is not allowed. Here are a few examples of how this first step works. All S is P, no S is P. No S is P, all S is P. Some S is P, some S is not P. Some S is not P, some S is P. To negate the predicate is always easy, also easy. You simply place a not in front of it. If you say, for example, all S is P, and in accordance with step one, change the quality, you get no S is P. Negating the predicate as step two requires would yield no S is not P. Aversion, unlike conversion and contraposition, works on all four kinds of propositions, A, I, E, and O. In other words, if we avert any of these four statements, we will get a statement that is logically equivalent to the original. Once we have applied both step one and step two, we end up with statements that do not look as if they mean the same thing, but they are in fact logically equivalent. Let's look at the statements we started out with and see what they look like after both steps one and two have been applied. All S is P, no S is not P. No S is P, all S is not P. Some S is P, some S is not non-P. Some S is not P, some S is not P. <laughs> if, for example, we want to avert all men are mortal, we say, no men are not mortal. Logically, they mean the same thing. And if we want to avert no men are gods, we say all men are not gods. Again, they mean the same thing for the purpose of logic. Double negation of the predicate in I statements. Let's take a close look at the I statement for a moment. Notice that with the I statement, you get two negations in the predicate after you avert some S is P. It gets turned into some S is not non-P. This is because under step one of aversion, you have changed the quality from affirmative to negative, which in particular statements you perform by negating the predicate. And then under step two, you negate the predicate. In other words, you end up negating the predicate twice. You can handle this in any one of four different ways. First, you can simply have two knots in the statement right next to each other. Second, you can make the knot directly in front of the predicate. For example, the second knot, a non, which means the same thing, but can sometimes sound better. Third, you can incorporate the second negation in the predicate word itself by placing in I am, A N, U N, and I N, or an I R at the beginning of the word you're using in the predicate. For example, if the original predicate was mortal, you could, you could take care of the second negation by using the word immortal. Be careful with this method, however, because, or since, there are some words which when I am, you, in, in, or I, are, are, re are placed at the beginning of the word, are not the actual negation of the original word. Finally, you can apply the, double, the rule of double negation. See discussion in the following paragraphs. Four ways of phrasing the predicate when averting I statements. One, simply place two knots at the beginning of the predicate term. Two, make the second not a non and attach it to the predicate word with the dash. Place an M, an, in, or an er at the beginning of the predicate term. Four, apply the rule of double negation. Be careful that you do not negate the predicate term by using an antonym. 
An antonym is a word which has a definition that is opposite that of another word. For example, if the predicate term is large, do not negate it by using the word small. The negation of the thing to which a predicate refers may not be either large or small, but somewhere in between. Again, aversion works on all four kinds of propositions. Double negation. How do you apply step two, which involves putting a not in front of the predicate? If there is already a not there, you can apply one of the first three ways of negating the predicate of an I statement, but sometimes this can sound rather awkward. For example, averting some men have brown hair to some men do not have brown hair simply doesn't sound right. The solution to this difficulty lies in applying the logical rule of double negation. The rule of double negation says that a term which is not negated is equivalent to a term that is negated twice and vice versa. In other words, not not P is logically equivalent to P. In short, they have exactly the same logical meaning. In O statements, if we do not apply double negation, we would end up with a triple negation. Some S is not, not, not P. We can get rid of two nots by applying double negation, yielding some S is not P, which of course is the same statement with which you began. In regard to O statements then, it is best just to remember that the averse of an O statement is the same as the original O statement. In other words, in practical terms, it really doesn't change at all. We do not need to apply the rule of double negation, but we can. There are times when applying double negation sounds awkward. In cases such as this, we do not need to use a rule. Conversion. Conversion is even easier than aversion since it involves only one step. It is as follows. Interchange the subject and predicate. Here are the ways in which sentences are converted. No S is P. No P is S. Some S is P, some P is S. Notice that, notice that we have converted only the E statement and the I statement. That is because conversion only yields a logically equivalent statement with these two kinds of statements. Conversion, in other words, does not work with the A and O statements. We can convert no men are gods and get no gods are men. And we can convert some men have brown hair and get some things that have brown hair are men. In both of these cases, we get a logically equivalent sentence as a result. But if we try to convert all men are animals, we get all animals are men. But these two statements are obviously not logically equivalent. And we've, if we convert some men are not accountants, we get some accountants are not men. These are obviously not logical, logically equivalent. Partial conversion of the A statement. We should add that A, that a statements can be partially converted. If an A statement is true, it can be converted into a true I statement, but it must be done in a slightly different way. The partial conversion of A can be accomplished by interchanging the subject and the predicate just as in ordinary conversion, but also changing the quantity. If we say all dogs are animals, we cannot do a normal conversion and say all animals are dogs, but we can do a partial conversion resulting in some animals are dogs, we need to think about this only briefly to see the sense of it. If, for example, all men are mortal, doesn't that imply that some mortals are men? If all the members of your family are eating dinner, are not at least some of the people eating dinner members of your family? Again, partial conversion of the A statement is done by interchanging the subject and predicate and changing the statement from universal to particular. Contraposition. Contraposition, the third method of converting statements into their equivalents, is accomplished in three steps. One, avert the statement. Two, convert the statement. Three, avert the statement again. Only the A and O statements can be, can be converted in this way. It is not to be used with I and E statements. E statements can be partially converted, but we will not discuss that here. Here is an example of how to contrapose an A statement. Original sentence, all men are mortal. Step one, avert, no men are non-mortal. Step two, convert, no mortals are men. Step three, avert, all non-mortals are non-men. As we mentioned, this can also be done with O statements. Here are the ways in which statements can be contrapo contraposed. All S is P, all non-P is non-S. Some S is not P, some non-P is S. 
Summary. There are three ways statements can be converted into their logical equivalents, aversion, conversion, and contraposition. An A statement can be averted by one, changing its quality, and two, negating the predicate. Aversion is permissible with all four kinds of statements. A statement can be converted by simply interchanging the subject and predicate. Conversion works only for E and I statements, although true A statements can be particular or partially converted into true I statements. Contraposition is accomplished by first averting the statement, then converting, and then averting the statement again. Contraposition may be used only with A and O statements. Review of chapters 4 through 9. In chapter 4, we moved from the study of simple apprehension, the subject of chapters 1 through 3, to the study of judgment. We said that judgment is a mental act whose verbal expression is what we call a proposition. We said that judgment can be defined as the act by which the intellect unites by affirming or separates by denying. A proposition is a sentence or statement which expresses truth or falsity. The three elements of any proposition are the subject term, the predicate term, and the, the cop copula. Finally, sentence are mu sentences are much more easily handled in logic if they are put into proper logical form, which means that they must show all three elements of a logical proposition clearly. In Chapter 5, we said first that there are four basic categorical propositions with which formal logic deals, all SSP, some SSP, no SSP, and some S is not P. We noted that in addition to the three components, the subject term S, the predicate term P, and the copula is, there is a fourth component, the quantifier. The quantifiers are the words all, some, no, and some, not. We said that there are two fundamental characteristics of categorical propositions, quality and quantity. Quality has to do with whether a statement is affirmative or negative. Quantity has to do with whether a proposition is universal or particular. We can summarize the quality and quantity of each statement as follows. A, affirmative universal. I, affirmative particular. E, negative universal. O, negative particular. See figure 5-1 for a diagram of these characteristics of categorical propositions. In chapters 6 through 7, we learn that according to the rule of contradiction, two statements are contradictory if they, differ, if they differ in both quality and quantity. According to the first law of opposition, two contradictory statements cannot be, both be true at the same time, nor can they both be false at the same time. We also learned in chapter 6 that according to the rule of contraries, two statements are contrary if they are both universal but differ in quality. According to the second law of opposition, two contraries cannot at the same time both be true, but can at the same time both be false. According to the rule of subcontraries, two statements are subcontrary if they are both particular statements that differ in quality. According to the third law of opposition, two subcontraries may at the same time be true, but cannot at the same time be false. We also learned in chapter 8 that according to the rule of subalterns, two statements are subalternate if they have the same quality but differ in quantity. According to the fourth law of opposition, subalterns may both be true or both be false. If the particular is false, the universal is false. If the universal is true, then the particular is true. Otherwise, your statement is state status is indeterminate. If you ever get confused about which statements are contradictory, contrary, subcontrary, or subalternate, all you have to do is consult figure 7-2, where all the relationships are visually illustrated. In chapter eight, we discuss distribution. Distribution is a status of a term in regard to its extension. When we say that a term is distributed, we mean that the term refers to all the members of the class of things denoted by that term. We showed how distribution works with both subject and predicate terms by using the following diagram. In summary, in chapter four, we defined what judgment was and how in and how a proposition, the verbal expression of a judgment, is constructed. In chapter 5, we dealt with the four logical statements and their quality and quantity. In chapter 6 or 7, we talked about the ways in which propositions can be logically opposed to one another. In chapter 8, we discussed the distribution of terms. And in chapter 9, we talked about the ways in which propositions can be logically equivalent.